Hello people, my name is Ferdy and in this tutorial I will show you step by step how you can make your WordPress website faster and it is completely free. Let me show you how, but before we do that, let's talk about website speed. Why would you want or even need to have a faster website? Well, there are five reasons. The first one, user experience. It is so much easier for people to go to your website when it is fast. When it's not fast, people can get distracted or bored or annoyed and they can leave your website. The second reason is when you have a fast website, you will have better conversions. Amazon did a test. They slowed down their website. They got 7% less sales. So it's really important to have a fast website, especially when you're selling things, because it means that you will have a better conversion on your website. And isn't that what we all want? The third one, when you have a fast website, you will rank better in the Google search results. There are three levels. If your website is below 200 milliseconds, Google sees you as a really good website. When your website is between 200 milliseconds and one second, it's a medium website. It's okay. When your website takes longer than one second to load, it is a slow website. And that means that you will rank worse in the Google search results. The fourth one, when you optimize your website using caching and your website will become faster, you can have more people at your website at the same time. So maybe your website is posted on Reddit. Tons of people go to your website. When your website is fast, you can handle more traffic at the same time and your website will not go offline. The fifth one, really important, when you have a fast website, you can impress your future spouse. In my case, Anna was not impressed by me until I showed her my website speed. And then she fell head over heel in love with me. Now we have two children, so I definitely will show her this tutorial. Of course, it's a joke, but um, the first four are really serious. That's why you want to have a fast website. And we're going to do that using caching. Well, what is caching? Well, normally when you have a WordPress website, the user requests your website, the homepage, for instance, the server needs to start up a PHP file. The PHP file connects to the database, gets information from the database, adjusts that information. And when the final PHP file is generated, it will return it to the server. And that server shows the user the website. A lot of steps. When you use caching, caching generates a static HTML file based on the process that I just showed you. So instead of going through all these steps, these steps will be reduced to the following steps. The user requests your website, the homepage or any other page. The request reaches the server. The server reaches to the cached homepage file, returns it to the server and that server shows it to the user. Potentially, this can be 10 times faster and that is what caching is. By using a caching plugin, you can optimize a lot of things and I will walk you through all the steps what you can do. We will make use of a free plugin. It's called the SiteGround Optimizer. SiteGround is a web hosting platform that costs money, but the SiteGround Optimizer is free even if you don't host your website with SiteGround. So that's great. And now let me show you how you can optimize your website using the SiteGround Optimizer. So I have my website over here. It's a WooCommerce website. I sell stuff and I've made a complete tutorial on how to make a website exactly like this. And I want to see how fast it loads out of the box without any caching plugins. So I go to the inspector of Google Chrome, inspect. Then I go to network. I refresh the page. And if I scroll up and I click over here, I see it takes about 1.22 seconds in order to load the website. So that's not fast enough. If I go to the header step, I see cache control, no cache. So let's make this look so much better. I go to the back end to plugins, add new, and I search for the SiteGround optimizer, SG optimizer. And even if you don't have a, a website that's hosted at SiteGround, you can still use it and it will work for your website as long as you use WordPress. I click on install now and I activate it. Great. I go to the website again because out of the box it will do some caching. Right mouse click, inspect, network, refresh the page. I scroll up and now look at this. Whoa, 2.75 milliseconds. That's so much faster already than the 1.26 seconds. So let's see how far we can take this. So I go to SiteGround, I go to the site tools. Then to websites, site tools. I go to speed, caching, and there are three levels of caching. The first one is NGINX, it will optimize things like images, JavaScript, and CSS. Then we have dynamic cache, what it basically does. It grabs all the PHP codes, database communications, and it makes one static page out of all that information, so it will load faster. I scroll down, and here I can flush 
the cache. And then we have memcache. And this is only for SiteGround users. If you click over here, it will optimize your database. So if I turn this on, your database becomes faster. So now I need to go to the website again. I go to the back end, scroll down all the way to SiteGround Optimizer Caching. I confirm this message. I turn on file based caching and I turn on mem cached. So let's open this in a new tab holding command or control on the PC. Right mouse click inspect network refresh show up to the website and now 190. Wow. This is what Google wants below 200 milliseconds. And now let's configure this. I go to the back end. I scroll down and automatically when you change something on your page, the cache will be purged and new caching will be created. You can also manually cache things. You can exclude URLs from caching. For instance, if you use, uh, have a web shop forward slash checkout, I don't want that page to be cached. Just like the my account page. Every page that can hold personal data of you, I would exclude it. So if you have a social media website, exclude all the profile pages. So I confirm that. I can also exclude post types, for instance, this one products or posts or pages. Then over here we can have browser specific caching and I, I don't need that. So I, I leave that off and then I can test everything. So I click on the test. So we can see that the homepage is cached. And if the homepage is cached, that means our entire website is cached, except for the excluded URLs. Great. Then we can go to the environment. We can enforce HTTPS. Uh, it's recommended. I turn it on and then you need to log in again. Fix insecure content. I turn it on. WordPress heartbeat optimization. I also recommend it. So every now and then, Everything will be checked when it comes to your admin pages, post and pages and site front end. So I will turn this all on 120 and schedule database maintenance. I turn it off. I disable that. I don't need that. So I go to the front end area there. We can optimize it even further. I can minify the CSS files. I can turn it on, but keep in mind, this is a little bit more tricky. So after every change, check out your website, see if everything is still working. If everything looks great when it comes to CSS, it's all about the styling. So I go to a certain page. I add it to the cart. I proceed to the checkout. Okay. Everything is still working. I go back to the next one. I can also exclude certain CSS minifications. I can combine CSS files. So I turn it on. It's enabled. I browse through the website. Everything still seems to be fine. Then preload combined CSS, turn it on, browse to the website. Everything seems to be working. And then the same can be done with JavaScript. So I turn this on, this one, and this one. I go through the website. Now, if something gets stuck, I know it has to do with the JavaScript codes. And then over here also at general, minify the HTML output, recommended. Web fonts optimization. And remove query strings. And I like to keep the emojis in my website, so I don't use that. So again, let's go through the website. See if everything still looks great. This is working. It is. Great. Now we can go to the media area and we can uh, compress our images. So right now it's not uh, enabled. I click on edit and I can set the compression level. 
let's say 60%. You can back up all your original images. And I want to compress my existing images too. I click on confirm. And then I want to use WebP images. That's a new standard. It's twice as small as JPEGs and PNGs. But first, all the images are compressed, and then I will turn on WebP images. So I turn it on, and then again, everything will be compressed. Great. I scroll down. Lazy loading. That means that when you're scrolling down, only the images that are visible will be loaded when they are visible in the browser. So before they will not be loaded. Otherwise, maybe people don't go down over here and all those images will be loaded even though they will never be seen by the user. So that's what lazy load means. An image will, will be loaded when it will be visible in the browser. So I turn it on and I scroll down and I change this, the maximum image width to 90, 20. Great. I can go to the website again, refresh it, right mouse click, inspect the website, go to network, refresh the page, and 149 milliseconds. Wow. It's even better. So let's go to tools.pingdom.com, fill in noahcorpushook.com, and start a test. I scroll down and it says performance grade 99, load time 221. So it's a little bit longer than the other one. Uh, page size 52 kilobytes, seven requests. And then here we can see things we can do in order to optimize our website even further. So avoid URL redirects. So I'm happy with the results. I hope you are too with your website. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And there's also, if you host your website at SiteGround, there's the SiteGround support. When you get stuck somewhere, you can ask a question if you want to know how to get in touch with the SiteGround support. I have a complete tutorial about SiteGround where I will talk about how to get in touch with them through the phone or through chat, or otherwise you can go to your own web hosting provider. You can Google stuff, watch videos like this in order to make your website faster. I think in my opinion, SiteGround, the optimizer does a great job in making your website faster and you can play around with the settings, see what is working for you, see what's not working. And when you mess up totally, you can always put a, back a backup from the day before. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like it. Feel free to subscribe and then you'll see me in the next video. Bye-bye.